So we, uh, throughout our last conversation, we had a few individuals who wanted to ask a couple of these questions and uh, some things such as, let's start off with getting a house, for example. Uh Let's say, for for me right now, my projection is in a year from now to have a place without HOA uh, housing situations and building like a container home that's self-sufficient with solar panels and just a little bit more off grid, still on grid. Cause you know, you still want everything, but, right. and then I have a chi- just to make sure I can have chicken. So, you know, I have eggs and everything else, just more self-sufficiency garden, whatever. So, you know, everyone has a different one. Maybe someone wants a house in a subdivision or a specific house. And for right. me, it's just more of that's the, what I want in the area I'm kind of at now, but there's nothing in particular. So I would just kind of love to pick your brain at how to go about with each one of those objectives. Oh, sure. sure. Um, Buying a house or getting a house is almost the same way as selling a house. If you remember from my last show that we did, I mentioned St. Joseph. And here's what I suggest to people, okay? Uh, If you're trying to buy a home, basically kind of have like a, something that represents uh, sort of, you know, what you're looking for, okay? And it doesn't have to be exact, just a general idea of what it is. And then you can have, like, um, a neighborhood, you know, with certain schools for the kids, you know, uh, you know, uh, it has to have, uh, you know, 2.5 baths or, you know, or two baths or three yeah. baths. What is, you know, just kind of a general overview of what, you, what it is you're looking for, okay? Um, the next thing you're going to need is a uh, – Something that represents St. Joseph again. I, you know, um, I think you're you're very familiar with the with the uh, Catholic religion, uh, mm-hmm. where St. Joseph is what the the uh, the saint for carpenters or something. Yes, that carpentry line. and such. Yep. Carp- yeah. Okay. So that, you know that goes that ties right into houses, buildings, you know, real estate, that kind of thing. All right. Next thing, have something that represents you. Just just you know you know in the, in the uh, you know in the stack here. All right, you're going to have these three items. They're going to be on the cocker plate. You're going to tune the machine for you to get for you to get the house that you want. Matter of fact, I just got finished working with a, a doctor uh, out of Florida who uh, who just uh, purchased his uh, dream home. And wow. oh yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was saying, uh, "Oh, I, I can't qualify. There's always something, you know." And, I, and you know, and again, he's anonymous, so you know we'll. I won't be betraying any, you know, any confidentialities that, you know, that we had. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, uh, they're, they're asking that I have a certain amount of money or cash on, on, on this thing. I can't figure out what, what the hell am I going to do? What, do I need to borrow more money or, or whatever? Then, you know, I tune the machine. Everything will work out. Everything will work out. You know, he'll find the money he needs. Guess what? He forgot about this. He had a 401k and he used the funds from the 401k, he, you know, to show yeah. the fact had that amount of cash on hand they had that amount of liquidity on hand and that is what that's what took him over the over the edge to buy that home wow wow i said either hell i didn't know this guy's finances it's none of my business right yeah and yeah but, and but yeah just the fact that uh everything came into place he was all worried about this all worried about that and i understand because buying a house i mean she's that's like getting married or getting a divorce i mean it's a major life decision yeah yeah it is and so uh but uh yeah he uh that's that's how it worked out but yeah you take all these items you're going to tune the machine okay tune the machine and once you tune it for you get that house you take the thing that represents you only represents you only take that off the copper plate and put that on the plastic plate leave the other items saint joseph and a sort of a general overview of the kind of house you're looking for and you may you may want to put in like uh you know you're not really worried so much about the money you're not worried about the journey you're worried about the destination yeah okay? yeah that makes sense all right yeah. you don't let the universe put all this stuff in place for you and uh and and again, that's what I suggest on buying a home. It's it's really simple, and and again, you have to go out there, do your own work, like we like we were discussing earlier. I think it's going to be a running theme for these for this uh, for tonight's show. Do your own work. You know, you have to call a realtor or uh, go out and research. Uh, look through, look in the paper, see what's for sale. Get on, you know, get on the internet, see what's yeah. local. Uh, yeah, meet your criteria. Do your own work. Is your credit in decent shape when you can get a mortgage? You know, are you going to get owner financing? Are you going to go through a bank or whatever, or credit union? Go through all these things. 
find out what it is that you need to have in order to pull this thing off, make it a reality, and start working on it. And use the, and the machine will help open up the avenues and for you to make this thing become a reality, just like the doctor in his 401k. He didn't know where the hell it was going to come from. He had no clue. And he said, oh, Shazam, what the hell? I, I should have remembered this. I forgot all about it. You know, and he was mm-hmm. able to take that, and that's what gave him the, uh, you know, made him qualify for getting the mortgage to buy his home. And so that's, you know, it's got another question uh, that's kind of goes on with that. Someone having debt, you know, instead of worrying about, you know, how they're going to get rid of all this debt or how, where they're going to get this money from it. It's more easy to focus on acquire, you know, have no debt, maybe write that as your intention and then you put, put that on the input and then a picture of yourself on the output. And just something as simple as that would take care of that type of situation? Right. That's the way I would do it uh, because, I mean, it may be, for example, you know, nowadays, you know, with the economy and what have you in the United States, uh, you know, they have uh, debt relief programs uh, where you can, uh, they can kind of negotiate with your credit card companies and um, and try to, you know, either lower your payments or to help, uh, you know, get rid of some of the interest on these uh you know, that's on your account and that kind of a thing. Um, and, or, hey, you know, a bank, there may be a million different things that will happen that will, will relieve that debt. You may get more income where you can pay down the principal or pay down that loan. Um, you know, just a million different things. Again, the way I look at, you know, don't focus on the journey. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to stress this one more reason why I'm repeating myself. <laughs> don't focus on the journey. Focus on the destination. Mm-hmm. I guess that's a way easier streamlined process to just get what do you need instead of worrying about everything else in between. Because if you know you're putting that energy towards it, you're bringing about that manifestation. It's bringing about that manifestation. All that can happen is that door will open up as long as you're going full forward with it. And that kind of, you know, a big thing when it comes with magic that people have a lot of issues with and uh, they could have this the radionics as well is attachment after you're done performing the operation mm-hmm. worrying about any of that well you during the operation have to put all that intent into it so that's what it's pulsating out into reality and you're not doubting anything because if you're doubting anything then yeah i i personally and i've had to do this there's one time in particular with a spirit where after i got done doing it he was like, you need to redo it, and you need to first dial in a psionic helmet and then do it. And I was like, oh, well, that makes more sense, and it made it ten times more amplified. But whatever the case may be, just making sure that you, as a part of this whole entire uh, you know, accessory to yourself, need to place all that into it so then you let go of that attachment to the outcome. You know, So mm. it's just something for everyone to continue to remember and... So then they're not stuck and hoping something manifests. Yeah. And and it brings me to our next question, which is love. You know, they're wondering, you know, it's always either money or revenge or love. That's usually what people in for radionics, whether it's <laughs> magic. That's usually the big turner for people. So oh, yeah. I, I, I know... For, kind of my background and different things to do and and involve the machines. But as you, I would love to hear what your thought process when it comes with love. Should it be more who is the best person for you and just let it do its thing or someone in particular? What would be your thought process with that? All right. I've gotten a lot of emails and, you know, from people saying, well, I have this particular person I want to uh, have a relationship with. How do I get them to talk to me or how do I talk to them? Well, uh, here's how I look at this. Don't focus on a specific person. Focus on what you're looking for. Okay. Okay. Uh, Say you like brunettes instead of blondes, you know, you want to, or or they have a certain personality trait that you're looking for, that kind of thing. It'd be a, a million different uh, things that that makes uh, that makes uh, you know that you're looking for in a in a mate or in a spouse, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. All right, you look for that. You you write that down. You have like a mental list of what it is you're looking for. 
And again, you don't wish for a specific person. Don't do that because I have heard so many stories from hell where these people say, "Oh, I had a crush on this on this person. I finally got to you know go out with them and get to know them." And I'm thinking, "Oh, what the hell was I thinking?" <laughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> exactly, exactly. So, so wish for the best person for you. Keep it open ended. And again, and I understand. Hey, we all we all you know met. Uh, you know, uh, people who we think we're thinking, oh, I just this is just this is the best thing I've ever met. Yeah, I want a relationship with this, you know, with this woman or or man or whatever the case may be. Okay, um, and and when you finally get to know them, you realize it wasn't what you were imagining it to be. But just wish for the right one for you, and let and again, it goes let the universe sort it out for you, and you will be surprised how you know. Uh, what will happen? Uh, will this, you know, will you get something that's absolutely 100% perfect that meets all your criteria? I don't know, but but look, you know, for all the selection or w- what was available, that may have been your best option. That may have been your best choice, and mm-hmm. uh, and so and and that's what I that's what I uh, suggest to people is, uh, you know, keep it over open ended. Let the universe sort it out for you. You'll be so mm-hmm. much better. Yeah, and you know what I was going to go into was people who I've asked about using sigils with entities and using it along the love line with these machines. Yeah. And I have definitely had – I've experimented and seen kind of different things with different flows. Now, me personally, I, I have an operation that I had kind of hoping up if I had a twin flame or a soulmate, and if no one knows the difference and all that, it basically is just, uh, like, twin flame is kind of essentially like your counterpart and mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of fire in it. Me, and I asked that, like, that would be more uh, brought to life and right. that I could just let that be. So if that, if that occurs with someone and I feel that, awesome. Otherwise, you know, keep going with my life. And that definitely amplified things to a hardcore level for myself to uh, a degree of almost pure certainty with the connection uh, I, I feel like it's it's linked with. But I've also uh, hit a point where it's like that that's hardcore intense. Mm-hmm. And for most people, you know, especially like with the occult or anything magical and stuff, you have to be, whether it's a sigil and all that, and like that I'm going to go into in a second. But just being very conscious about that, like just letting the universe do its thing, all natural, is definitely a, a, the way about going it. I, I really do like the way you have that because it's more broad and not so specific. And yeah. I feel like mine, mine did dial it down to specifics because it's like, a specific thing I'm asking for an intention of like another spirit and all that. So it's super empowered that, but I've seen with like, if you were to work with a spirit, uh, you could have the sun for instance on the input plate and then the output plate, the spirit itself and ask your intention and do that whole process of magic working with that being. And for that offering be the sun or Mm -hmm. whatever the being may want. But, you know, working with an entity also comes in line with what evolution are they going to have you go through in order to get that. It's just like putting in that work, you know, but working with yourself in the universe versus working with a being, you know, it could go definitely a couple of different ways. I know either way you're going to evolve 100 percent and going to become a better individual because that's the only thing I've witnessed with, you know, my own work with the radionics, working with a being, but... I definitely do notice, like we've said before, entities do like that clean energy, uh, cleaner than us having to project stuff to bring things to manifest. But, you know, I I had an operation I did for uh, a client where I had uh, an entity, like when I would ask her for her assistance uh, to help out this client and all that, and I'd have on my helmet and dialed in a machine, like I said before, it, it it's it's times ten intensity when it comes to this uh, seeing the being, smelling the atmosphere, being there with the atmosphere. Uh, everyone's third eye is already working, if you can imagine. So if th- with this machine, it's like I don't even have to imagine. I'm already seeing, and I'm able to look around into like this infinite with all these things all together. But you know, it's just. 
it makes things a lot more uh, in depth and intense. And, and you know, just realizing, like, because when I worked with Magic in the past, when it came with uh, love things, because like that's what got me into it when I was uh, a youngster. You know, that was I was like, no one loves me. I have to use Magic. But all of it, you know, usually, okay, usually ended up in shit. And right. it'd be a whole dirty situation, but I've learned about myself, you know, it's like right. this guy, I get the, oh, oh, that girl I really like now just talked to me and I found out exactly, wow, what the hell was I thinking, you know, like all these lessons that really in the end are to empower you and so you love yourself and know your own worth and all that. So people just, yeah. you know, be wary about doing all those things as well as, you know, being respectful to the entity just because you have a sigil. And it's of an entity, and you put it on a plate. You can't just do that. You're gonna actually have to build that uh, communication and bond. Otherwise, you're just letting that energy that comes out of that sigil go ram- rambunctious. You know where you're at, and right. so you yeah. know people yeah. have to be very wary of that too. Yeah. Like, okay, what separates a uh, an okay magician from a a sorcerer? I mean, from a a person you know who like. You know, people like yourself and JS, what separates the average Joe, and I use that in quotation marks, average Joe magician uh, from people who are the same caliber as you and JS? What do you think the difference is? I'm just curious. Uh, f- personally, mm-hmm. uh, for myself, I see it as the fire and the reasoning behind which I use the magic. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, the reason and goals and my projections, my eagle vision of like my goals and ambitions to do with life, I feel like are so uh, intense and sovereign within me to be able to want that. But the entities I work with, uh, whether that's Simon Necronomicon, angels, demons, they are also behind some of, not all of them are behind all this mission and that, but I have different missions and the, they're behind the mission. So it empowers them the connection you know versus someone who would just want to get like they're just trying to get laid all the time and they just have the money to just go blow it uh being you know a jackass like having a bigger foundation and an objective and a goal that's not only good for you and the human consciousness but also the collective of the other entities and bringing their awareness out and Mm -hmm. so for me i feel like like with js and uh other uh, black magicians that are out there it, it's because we're not afraid to speak out something that might be objectively quote evil, but it is the truth. And in, in that what I've seen with things, I see the world is very upside down uh, as in, you know, like the, the government makes the issues and then they're the ones telling us that this is the way for the solution or this religion says you have to follow this, this and this. Otherwise you're not a worthy individual or I just feel like everything is just so upside down and to empower the, uh, each individual and like that's like I know a big thing with JS which is why I respect him so much is you know to become your turn sheeps in the goat in the wolves that's what that's what he said and make people to be able to be empowered so I just feel like when it comes to those bigger missions and bigger views on why you're using magic and what you're doing it for is a way to empower it you know as mm-hmm. well as I know some people and eh, like you don't want to get involved with using blood or certain things along those lines, you know, and, and I can understand right. that completely with things. Uh, but I guess even for myself, I've gone farther than what I thought I was going to go with uh, deep into magic, but I did, I have hit a point where I know where I stand with things where it's on my own being and I have friends and alliances, but I serve none. Like I don't okay. want to ever have that. And I know that that's something too, to have respect for yourself when you're working with these beings and stuff because otherwise you know like people there's all these horror stories of oh i opened up this thing i did this it's like first off you open up a portal and you didn't think anything was going to happen and then things start to happen and you don't know what to do like you're just being ridiculous the ouija board i i personally i don't i I wouldn't want to do that because it's questioning what's going on if i call upon a spirit at least i know i'm calling upon that spirit and i know what i'm asking for you know and i can sit there and be like okay, I'm prepared for this, but I just really do think that when it comes to it, being with it naturally, not, and I get the aesthetic, like, I personally love 
wearing black. I love skulls. I love all those things. But like, it's not like I'm just doing that for like, oh, and I'm into magic. Blah. It's like, it's just a part of me. And it's always felt a part of me. And I feel like there's people who have been born and it's, there's always been like a, that's been a part of them. And so I do feel like it's something to do with the cer- certain individuals here on this planet. But mm-hmm. I truly think it comes down to your purpose and which why you use magic is how empowered it is. That's just what I personally think. Okay, yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, that's kind of how I feel about radionics. You know, it's just uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's about focus and that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, you know, everybody, they're always looking for that edge. They're always looking for that edge, you know, whether it's radionics, whether it's magic or whatever. And I like the fact that, you know, we're able to come together, like with JS, uh, Charles Cosimano and yourself, for example. Um, all, you know, all of us have one thing, you know, in common, and that's radionics. We're all using radionics. I mean, you guys are into magic. You know, yeah, I think I discussed this before. Will I, you know, use an angel or something along that line? Of course I will. You know, again, I, you know, it's my belief system. You know, I, I'm not judgmental on what other people do. Uh, you know, I always like the kid, JS, you know, I think I was on a show with him and he was, uh, you know, he, you know, uh, pricked his finger, you know, to draw some blood to put on a sigil. And I was looking at him, you know, I, I, think, I was telling him, uh, JS, I kind of feel like I'm in the middle of a hepatitis hazard right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was just joking with the guy. But, you know, again, that's his blue system and what have you. Um, do do the, you know, and I was told that blood is a is the currency of, of demons. Is that correct? Or am I, uh, wrong? I don't I don't know if I'd call it currency, but I do think like when it comes to radionics, like that energy is a exchange of it's an exchange of energy. Or if you put down like roses, let's say for a love spell, for example, that essence of the roses could be used for the ritual. So blood is another – it's a cryptocurrency uh, out there. You know, there's different cryptocurrencies. You're right, I got gotcha. you. So, yeah. I got gotcha. you. It's just a good – it's probably the Bitcoin, I would call it. Oh, it. okay. It's the granddaddy of all. Yeah. yeah. I got you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just curious. Again, that's, that kind of thing doesn't resonate with me. You know, I mean, it doesn't make it wrong. I'm just saying it doesn't resonate with me. That's yeah. That's make sure. It's, you know, you know, the one thing, the one thing, you know, when it came down to uh, just thinking about all that, because at first it made me feel kind of a little icky, to be honest. But uh, when my dad got cancer and then he passed away from it and I saw the, you know, radiification and how it could get rid of tumors and all these other and like just ailments or whatever the case, it's just. To me, I was like, I don't want anyone else in my life, you know, to ever, I, if I if I know how to do this and anyone was to ask me, I would be able to at least do my best, you know, to go after that and just do, go all out, you know. Right. So for me, I'm just more of a, like, I need everything in the arsenal to understand. And I see, like, those rights that they use, that, ver- you know, is hardcore, you know, when they use the chickens and all that. And, you know, just like. I understand the power behind all that, and I do understand too. Though, like having a box on for X amount of time can also be the same amount of energy. You know, it's just one's more of a bang right off the bat, and the other one's more of a snowball effect that right. builds it up. So, you know, I, I do also understand that length when it comes with it. Uh, but I, I don't just spill out, you know, anything for just anything. You know, I, I, I have to be pretty hardcore about what i'm trying to do to want to go to that level because when i when i've done it you know and and anyone that i've helped out with a ritual or something and they want to do it you know that first time you do that like it's tingles throughout the whole body it's it's very magnetic it's very intense Uh but it is that much more the push behind it but you know i don't know all the uh ups or downs i don't know if that then like lowers how long you're gonna live by a week i'm not saying it is or isn't i'm just saying like you know the currency you know so you just kind of do wonder a little bit about everything but you know just to empower and uh cause big effect you know i've noticed in my own life like when i started doing that it really caused bigger change to occur and but like when i when i would put like blood on the output plate and I put it over a, a sigil, and then I put the sun going through. I went to the gym, and uh, the being of a Satanchi, and he helps out with physique, 
and uh, just like to freaking be a brutal freaking general that's just like mm-hmm. goes hard. And when I was in the gym, I could just keep going, just like not nonstop, and just keep picking up weights at like, like I I've been going between like seventy and eighty, and I was picking up like nineties and just pushing stuff on my chest and just going hard. Sit there for a second. And then feel pumped up, do it again. Hey, let's throw some push-ups in here. And, you know, I've always been really hardcore when it comes to, like, pushing myself. I love that. But, like, with this on the box and the energy Mm -hmm. being focused to me, I had to go – once I got done with the workout, I had to go home and turn it off. And I was still amped up for a few hours. But, like, I could feel that energy. And while I was also working out, that entity there in my psychic vision – that just kind of kept me to just like keep going, keep going, keep going, like in a war camp. And so I do also like see how that can help project things in that angle into your well-being. And uh, that's just, it's just, you know, we can't exactly say, oh, do this, that, and the other, because, you know, then they'll try to chop down on us and say you can't talk about any of that. But, you know, I have noticed like that physique, uh, just becoming better with physique doing that as well as sleep and, uh, you know, congestion or whatever that may be. Whatever it may be, the projection of that dial and doing all that, you know, has been, you know, just being as broad as I can be. It's been very effective. And uh, I, I just think it's another it's just another way to keep you going in a great and positive direction. And so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I set a machine for me to, you know, safely return, you know, go, safely go, uh, go to the Mexico and come back. I didn't want to catch anything. I didn't want to, you know, uh, you know, eat something bad and be sick while I'm on my vacation or, you know, it's, it, you know, it's a little bit of business there too. But, you know, I didn't want to get sick. I didn't want to pick up anything funky from, uh, you know, if I, from flying because if anybody out there knows that, um, you know, how many times you've heard saying, oh, everything was great, then I got on a plane, and then the next day I'm like sick as hell, you know, because they picked up some kind of a cold, because basically, you know, the, those those jets are, you know, you got hundreds of passengers that go in that plane every mm-hmm. single freaking day, and God only knows what's, you know, you know, what kind of illnesses they may have, <laughs> and, and it, you know, and it stays inside that plane, and then you're right in the middle of it, and you got it blowing right in your face, and, you know, and what have you. So I set a machine to make sure that I would be safe. Also, just because I understand a little bit about, you know, about the use of, uh, of vitamins and supplements, you know, when it comes to fighting, you know, colds, illness, illnesses, mm-hmm. flus, that kind of thing. Yeah, set a machine. But you also, I, this goes back to what we are talking about before, taking action. I took some vitamin C, take some zinc, do your D3. Have your supplements, build up your immune system, you know, have block against all this stuff. You know, yeah, I'm using radionics, but I'm also working in conjunction with uh, with other things to help me, you know, to, to work in conjunction with the machine. And and again, it's just a layering effect. It's just, you know, stacking one on top of the other and then have them work playing off of each other and to amplify mm-hmm. the results. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, now, now I, I will say that last 20 seconds, it just froze oh there's a reason for that <laughs> yeah 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 it froze for 20 seconds and, and so then when you said layers and layers so i don't know what you just said oh, okay i was going to say uh for example this is for well-being okay again mm-hmm. well-being you know when i was down in uh mexico uh you know i set a machine before i left to make sure that i would safely go down and safely come back without getting sick okay and so yeah, set a machine for that, but also, also on top of the machine, I used, you know, I took like some vitamin C, some D3, some zinc with that to, so where I got, you know, not only have I got proper supplements in my system to help, you know, uh, increase my immune uh, immunity to any kind of cold or flu or what have you, I also have a machine working in conjunction with that and they're working, playing off each other. Now, who knows, that machine could be responsible for making me uh, take of the you know the vitamin C and the D3 and the and the zinc in order to prevent a cold or a flu or to get sick. Okay. Mm, oh yeah, no, definitely. And you know, you saying that, you know, there's 
not only could your airplane maybe it got delayed because you would have got sick because it could have been a different airplane but like i i actually had a lot there's another example from the last time there's supposed to be a, a storm where it was a rainstorm so we got raining all day and i in the morning i had a route and it said i was gonna it's supposed to rain all day and so i was like whatever and it, i was happy about the route but right before i went out they went up to me and said hey you gotta go we're moving you somewhere else so i'm like why are you moving me they're like no you, you gotta get on this route and i was mind blown all day and kind of mad they switched me for something i liked but i didn't get rained on all day and i get back to the facility and they told me they were, everyone was getting rained on all day but i was the, the route that was the farthest one out Right. So that morning, I ended up, you know, I plugged in the machine. I don't want to get wet. And what it ended up doing is pulling me from where I wanted to be at to not get wet to send me out in the middle of nowhere. So it's like sometimes you get what you want, but you don't know how you're going to get it. And that's always something to be careful what you wish for attitude, you know. Uh, or you that, as we said before, is God, I think it's going to be the third time we say it tonight. <laughs> don't worry about the destination. Or don't worry about the journey. Worry about the destination. My journey happened to be, I was I was sitting in freaking Dallas for 17 hours. No offense to Dallas, Fort Worth area. You know, the airport <laughs> over there, no offense. But I'm just saying I was there for 17 hours, okay? It, it was a little boring, I have to I have to admit. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, again, it's just it, 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 you don't know what route is going to happen. You don't know how it's going to happen, and, and that kind of a thing. And, and so, what can I say? But you know, really, uh, I think we've covered a lot here. You know, when it comes to like debt and uh, you know buying a house and you know love. And, and again, I get a lot of this stuff. You know, I think we were. I like to joke with you know Chuck. What we say? Well, there's three things. There are three reasons why people want these machines. That's uh, they want to get paid, they want to get laid, and they want uh, revenge. Well, I don't like to use the word revenge. I like to use the word justice. Mm. Justice is more. It's a, what is revenge? It's justice. Yeah, it just, it just sounds more pleasant, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, and justice could take on many forms. They could, you know, they could, you know, they might screwed you over, but they go to the next guy trying to screw him over, and, and they wind up with a baseball bat in their skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I mean, I got right now on uh, Hunter Killer. I mean, uh, on, my, on the Killer one, I got uh, an entity that it's just like, don't, if you if you throw something my way, I told him you can not only throw it back, but throw it back with some of your own fun with it, man. Have fun with it, basically. Have and fun, so, exactly. So I'm, exactly. I'm over here like, I don't want y'all to do anything, but now like I got the base covered, you know, because that was something, too. When it comes to being a magician, you know, there's always these cleanses and stuff that, I mean, obviously I like to do a ritual cleanse and, you know, keep things all friendly, but... I don't feel like I have to be on it anymore, you know. After that machine turn, once I had all three programmed and I turned them all on, I felt for the first ten minutes, this uh, it wasn't hardcore, but it was just a light feeling of like maybe two pounds of weight that was laid off of me. It was really weird, but it was like a two pound weight that was just lifted off of me. Yeah, you know, it's like. Yeah, yeah. You felt, you felt brighter. Everything's like going to be. Yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. It's like it's like all of a sudden this pulsation within the aura pushes everything out like that, and it was like, wow, this is really incredible, you know. So you always want to keep up your defenses, especially in the world. If you're going to be building yourself to be in the spotlight or putting yourself out there on YouTube or whatever the case is, I think it's all it's almost. Uh, mandated you should have yourself something like that you know because people will use this stuff you know even not all for positive you know some people will use this for negative means and i bet that the higher up governments have been using this stuff you know yeah. for their own negative means and that's what they've been doing yeah and, and again i've heard this i don't know this for a fact i just heard this, heard this that you know in the magic world there's a lot of I would say competition, maybe envy a little bit from you know some people, or whatever, or they or they may mis uh, they may misunderstand whether a person might might make a comment. It, was, it wasn't directed toward them. They weren't trying to be insulting or whatever, but it may be received as being insulting to them. And they say, "Oh, I'm going to get you." 
and I'm thinking, geez, man, let, you know, guys, let's all work together. Let's do positive shit. Let's help, you know, let's get rid of some of these scumbag pedophiles and, you know, and whatever. Some of these uh, people who, uh, who are trying to enslave, you know, the world's population by doing some, you know, very mischievous stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, let's, let's work together to make the world a better place instead of fighting amongst ourselves. Because, you know, if you unify and everybody's working toward a common goal, I mean, it'd be so much more productive and, and it, it would really bring a, a lot better uh, reputation, you know, for, you know, what we're trying to accomplish. That's just my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong about this. But, you know, um, one thing I will say, you know, for example, you, you know, JS, you know, uh, anybody that messes with kids, anybody that messes with women, he is out there ready to kick ass and take names. He's going to he's going to put a uh, he's going to put some really baneful you know mojo your way 